Good morning and welcome to Rye. Uh, I've just boarded the island coaster, which is going to take me to Yarmouth, along the south coast of the island. So, quite a long journey, two and a half hours. Uh, so I'm going to settle in. I'm a bit disappointed it's uh, not uh, an open top bus, but uh, later on today I shall be boarding the Needles be uh, Breezer, uh, uh, which are open top. So I um, hope to get some good photographs along the way. And um, sun meant to be in and out, which is pretty much ideal for photography, I think, in the kind of middle of the day-ish. So I uh, hope to get some good pictures. Hope you'll join me on my journey. So we just arrived at the Needles, we're waiting to go up to the uh, battery and uh, get some views down. The theme park is uh, looking pretty busy, a little bit of music going on, a little bit of live music, yeah, very nice atmosphere. Fortresses. Hurst Castle was one of the most advanced of the artillery fortresses built by Henry VIII. It was used as a prison for eminent 17th century captives and later strengthened during the 19th and 20th centuries. Its situation at the narrow entrance to the Solent, where the ebb and flow of the tides create strong currents, put would be invaders at its mercy. After his incarceration in Carisbrook Castle here on the island, Charles I was imprisoned in Hearst Castle in 1648, before being taken to London for his trial and execution. During World War II, Hearst was manned with coastal gun batteries and searchlights. Opposite Hearst Castle, on the shore of the island, you can see Fort Albert, which was built in 1856 and formed another part of the 19th century defence system against the French. Still largely intact, it has been, in part, converted to luxury accommodation. This was one of the test sites for the Brennan torpedo, an ingenious wire-guided weapon from the early part of the 20th century. 
Down to your left is a wonderful view of the celebrated coloured sands of Allen Bay. These sands first appeared on record in 1790, and the Victorians were the first to visit in large numbers, to view both the natural coloured sand cliffs and the stunning landscape. The Victorians were also the first to fill various shaped glass bottles with the natural sand, and to create sand pictures. Naturally occurring cliff falls provide the source for the sand, which is professionally collected, thus the number of available colours can vary from year to year. The cliffs are made up of the mineral quartz, and the 21 different colours that are visible are all tinted by varying amounts of minerals that are naturally present. Use was also made of the white sand, which was quarried, stored at Yarmouth, and taken by schooner to run corn to make plate glass. It was also taken to porcelain factories in London, Bristol, Worcester, and the West Indies before the trade ceased in 1851 in favour of French sand. There was once a pier at Allen Bay. It was built in 1873 to allow Victorian paddle steamers to land passengers there. Traffic became less frequent after the First World War. both left and right, you will be able to see where the downs rise above the flat, fertile farmland. These low, rolling chalk hills form a natural backbone to the whole of the island, and are a unique habitat to many species of wildlife. Charles Dickens said after a visit, From the top of the highest down, there are views which are only to be equaled on the Genoese shore of the Mediterranean. It is possible to start at the Needles viewpoint at the end of Tennyson Down and walk the 26 miles to Culver Down above Sandown, following country footpaths nearly all the way and crossing the road only some half a dozen times. This route is often referred to as the roof of the island. Walking on it has been described as flying low over the whole landscape tragically died. The attendance of this festival to this day remains the highest attendance for any music event in the country, with over 600,000 people turning up for the festivities. It currently ranks at number seven in the world's most attended concerts, with only the likes of Rod Stewart and Jean-Michel Jarre overtaking the 600,000 figure. Smugglers once used the caves around the bottom of the chalk cliffs, and these can be seen during low tides. Here at Freshwater Bay, you can stroll along the Pebble Beach and enjoy a meal and ice cream at one of the many cafes. From here, you can join the Tennyson Trail, which leads to the top of Tennyson Down, and eventually onto Allen Bay and the Needles. At the top of the down, at a height of 147 metres, stands a huge granite cross commemorating the life of Alfred Lord Tennyson. From here, on a clear day, it is possible to see Old Harry Rocks and the Isle of Purbeck to the west, Yarmouth and Lymington to the north, and to the east, much of the Solent, as well as a large part of the western half of the Isle of Wight, and St Catherine's Point, some 20 kilometres away across Bryston Bay.